In our previous lecture, that is squares and roots of numbers, lecture three, we were able to estimate the square roots of some numbers. And we further explain to you how to make a number a perfect square. So in this particular lecture, squares and roots of number lecture four, we shall be looking at the rules of square roots and its application. Okay, let's begin. Below are the rules of square roots. The first one says that the square root of A times B is the same thing as square root of A times square root of B. Please take note of this rule. The second rule says that the square root of A over B is equal to the square root of A all over the square root of B. The third rule says that the square root of A plus B is not the same thing as the square root of A plus the square root of B. The next rule says the square root of A minus B is not the same thing as the square root of A minus the square root of B. All these rules are provable. In our lectures on sorts, we are going to prove these rules so that you can understand them and see how they are applicable. Okay, now, A and B, of course, are positive numbers because in our last lectures, we were able to tell you that we are dealing with only positive numbers here. Negative numbers are in advanced mathematical concepts known as complex variables. So here, we are considering only positive numbers. So this rule is only applicable when A and B are positive numbers. Okay. Now, let's look at the application of the rules of square roots. Now, let's apply it in solving some classical problems. Example one. The question says, find the square root of 0 0.81. 0 0.81. Of course, this is a decimal number, right? So the first thing we are going to do is that we are going to convert this decimal number into a fraction. So, okay, solution. So converting 0 0.81 to a fraction. Now you see, after the decimal point, we have two numbers after the decimal point. So it means that 0 0.81 is in two decimal places. So converting it to fraction, we are going to divide that with what? 100. So we are going to have 81 over 100. Why it is 100 is because it is to two decimal places. Now, now, if you check this with your calculator, 81 over 100 is the same thing as 0 0.81. So converting 0 0.81 to fraction, we have 81 over 100. Therefore, the square root of 0 0.81, which is what we are asked to find, is equals to the square root of 81 over 100. So they are the same, right? Because 0 0.81 is equals to 81 over 100. Therefore, the square root of 0 0.81 is equals to the square root of 81 over 100. And according to our rule, this is the same thing as square root of 81 all over square root of what? 100. Then square root of 81 is what? 9. Square root of 100 is what? 10. So we now have this to be equal to 9 over 10. And of course, you know that 9 over 10 is equal to 0 0.9. So it's as simple as that. We can conclude that the square root of 0 0.81 is equal to 0 0.9. I hope you understand this. Okay, let's advance to another example. Example 2 says, find the square root of 0 0.0169. 0 0.0169. Of course, you know that we are going to still convert that to a fraction. And if you look at 0 0.0169, you are going to see that it is to four decimal places. So that means we are going to divide that with what? With 10,000. So what we are going to have is 169 all over 10,000. If you check this out with your calculator, 169 over 10,000, you are going to get 
0.0169. So it's the same thing. Okay. So therefore, we are looking for the square root of 0.0169. So that will give us uh, 169 all over 10,000. That is the square root of 169 over 10,000. Now, according to our rule of square root, we are going to split this to half square root of 169 all over square root of what? 10,000. The square root of 169 is what? 13. The square root of 10,000 is what? 100. So what we are going to have is what? 13 over 100. Then 13 over 100 is equal to what? 0 0.13. So we can conclude that the square root of 0 0.0169 is equal to 0 0.13. I hope you understand this. Okay. Now, example three. Example three says, evaluate the square root of three whole numbers, six over 25. Of course, that's a mixed fraction. So to solve this problem, we are going to first convert three whole numbers, six over 25, to an improper fraction. Okay, let's do that together. Solution. So converting three whole numbers, 6 over 25, to an improper fraction, we have, of course, three whole numbers, 6 over 25, that will be equal to 25 times 3 plus 6, all over 25. I hope you know how to convert mixed fraction to improper fraction. That's what we just did here. 25 times 3 plus 6. Then 25 times 3 gives us what? 75 then plus 6 over the 25. Then 75 plus 6 is equal to what? 81 over 25. So now we have been able to convert 3 whole numbers, 6 over 25, to get 81 over 25. So therefore, we are looking for the square root of 3 whole numbers, 6 over 25. So that will give us square roots of 81 over 25. So applying our rule, we're going to have square root of 81 all over square root of 25. So square root of 81 is what? 9, because 9 times 9 is 81. Then square root of 25 is what? 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. So this we're going to have 9 over 5. I hope you understand this. So if you want to convert it back to a mixed fraction, we're going to say... 9 divided by 5, that is one whole number, remainder 4, all over the 5. So that's the mixed fraction. I hope you understand what we just explained. Okay? If you don't understand this, please go over the lecture again. Okay, now, let's give you something to play with, because we've come to the end of this particular lecture. Now, the first question says, find the square root of 0 0.0081. The next one says, evaluate the square root of four whole number 21 over 25. So in our next lecture, we shall be considering further examples on square roots and its application. So see you in the next lecture. Thank you for your attention.